I have this neat tank top that has an asymmetric neckline, some pleats on the center, an all-in-one facing, one with a print and another one with a solid. Really comfy to wear and finish so neatly on the outside, on the inside. I'm sharing all the details. Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I have some neat sewing to share with you today. It's not the typical neat sewing that you do. There are quite a few techniques here that you would also do with woven projects. It goes out of the norm. It's a different type of sewing and I always enjoy that with neat projects. The design is simple, but there are details there that make it really special. What I'm talking about is a Sentosa tank from Itch to Stitch. This is a brand new pattern I've been testing for a little while and if you've been following all the videos I upload on this channel, a few days ago I uploaded a video about how to sew an all-in-one facing and I showed you two ways to do that and you would have seen a sneak peek of my Sentosa tank right there with the print I was using. So in this video you are going to see the actual pattern I was using. As soon as I saw the version Kenneth posted for the testing core I was immediately super enamored with it. Anything that is asymmetric is my jam. I really really love an asymmetric neckline. I think it's always super striking. It just captures your attention straight away. At least for me my eyes just go diagonally there to look at that beautiful neckline. Below this asymmetric shape has a point on one side. You have some pleats there. Super pretty. You can see them really well when you sew them on a solid. On a print you won't see them that much but you still see them. It's just really hard to capture in photography you know. Kenneth who is a designer at each stitch is always great at sewing up her patterns in fabrics where you can really see. Anyway it's so so lovely. It is a tank top. There aren't sleeves available here because it is a tank and on the inside it's finished really cleanly with an all-in-one facing. Only four pattern pieces, side seams, a hem, you know it could be pretty simple. The front and the back are cut on the fold. Up here on your shoulders, your upper chest, at the bust it'll be semi-fitted but then from the bust down, waist and hips, the feet is really relaxed, just really easy to wear, nothing that is going to be tight on the body. The Sentosa tank has been designed for neat fabrics. It won't work with a woven fabrics, it's just too fitted up here. It just won't work, don't try it with a woven fabric. <laughs> you need light to medium weight, neat fabric that stretches at least 50%. You do need that stretch because as I mentioned you know all in this area it's going to be pretty fitted not tight but there's not a lot of ease there here around the bust area I have a graphic here where you can see some neat fabrics that are going to work ITY is going to work perfectly I made one of mine in ITY double brush poly single brush poly athletic knits I made one in an athletic knit because I made two rayon bamboo modal slash spandex those types of fabrics are going to work really well also cotton lycra could work just make sure it's not too heavy and not too stiff I think the pleats are going to be more noticeable and the look a little bit more boxy just because cotton lycra doesn't really drape that much at all because we're working with an all-in-one facing you do need to eliminate the stretchy on the armholes and on the neckline so you will need to some fusible stay tape. If you don't have that you can cut your own strips of interfacing. I, that's what I do. I've never used fusible stay tape. I've never actually owned any <laughs> so I just get my non-stretch really really lightweight fusible interfacing and just cut my own little strips that are about 3 8 of an inch wide and I use that to stabilize the areas that need it. All the facing pieces, the front and the back, you do need to interface those. So you do need neat tricot interfacing. You know the type of interfacing that stretches. That's the one that's gonna work. Don't try to use interfacing that doesn't stretch because you'll end up with a really uncomfortable tight facing underneath your garment. Your garment is stretchy because you're making it out of a neat fabric so you do need the appropriate interfacing to go on that facing that will be on the inside. Because the Sentosa tank is a brand new pattern it will be 20% off for the first week. That goes through Sunday 6th of June so you can get it for a little bit less up to that date. I will leave my affiliate link down below as well as any other helpful resources I have like how to sew the all-in-one facing. You can find my affiliate link there as well if you were planning to buy the pattern if you like it and you purchase. I do receive part of that sale as commission, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. That is one of the ways I make an income by creating all this free content on YouTube. I have to disclose that when I do have affiliate links, of course. The sizing's great from double zero to 40 US. That will go up to a 62 inch hip in the largest size. The length is going to reach mid hip sort of thing. There is a regular and a full bust option in this pattern. So just measure your high bust and your full bust if you have three inches difference or less you could use the regular bust. If you have three inches or more you can use the full bust. <laughs> 
when you have three inches you can choose which way to go I always choose the full bust option I think I always have a better fit I feel more comfortable you do have positive ease in this design but as I mentioned around this area it is semi fitted so you won't have a lot of positive ease there for my size at least 12 with a full bust I only get 5 eighths of an inch of positive ease at the full bust right there so that's why I'm saying you do need stretch fabric you cannot make this in a woven fabric now going down to the waist and hips I mentioned it was really relaxed there was enough ease there at the waist there's quite a lot of ease because it's not much shaping there so 11 to 13 inches it just depends on if you're doing the regular or the full bust option and then at the hips, three to five inches of positive ease there. So it'll fit nicely. There's nothing that's gonna be tight and clinging here at the waist and hips, which is nice. <laughs> For my own fitting and blending of sizes, I've chosen the 12 full bust as my base size to fit my shoulders and every, everywhere here properly. And I'm keeping that same size 12 up to the waist. There is a notch on the sides. And from there, I've blended out crossing 14 and going off to a 16 to make sure I have the right amount of ease. In the finished garment measurements you can see the finished length of the Tentosa tank and I knew that I needed to add some length to mine. That was the only fitting adjustment I did which is basically a length adjustment. Shorten and lengthen line just spread the pattern apart and I added one and a half inches for one of my versions. For my second version I thought I still would want another inch so my second version has two and a half inches extra there. To sew our tank for this pattern we're using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance which is pretty common to find for neat projects. You have already seen how to sew the all-in-one facing so I am not repeating that content in this video. We are going to focus on the facing, stabilizing the areas that need to be stabilized, how to put all these front pleats together, a lot of general construction so let's see how to put the Sentosa tank together. There's only four pattern pieces for the Sentosa tank. This is a front piece. It is extended because it is asymmetric. It's not the same as the back, for example, that you see there. That one's cut on the fold. The facing for the back is also cut on the fold. But these two pieces are totally asymmetric. That means that when you cut them out, you need to have the right side of the fabric facing up. And then you put your pattern piece with all your marks on them. So both of them facing up. The same as the facing, you need to have the right side of the fabric looking up at you when you cut your pattern pieces. So here we have our facing. For both of these, you need neat interfacing because the facings do need the extra structures. You can see my tricot knee interfacing there. I did block views as always. I never changed my method, whether it's it's neat or woven. I just interface a larger area, slightly larger, and then put my pattern piece on top and then cut out my piece. On the facing pieces, you will find marks here on the armhole and it doesn't mean that there's a sleeve to put on here, this is a tank. These are marks that are going to help you put the facing with the main pieces together later. There is a dot there that's going to be where you pivot and snip into later when you sew them together and a few marks here. That is reference to the pleats that are going to be on the center front. So I'm going to turn this one around so you can see some marks maybe. Here in this section, you have a dot there and a dot that finishes there and then another one here. Same is here there are other two lines that's going to be another pleat and then there's a larger pleat here that's diagonal and it finishes here so you have three pleats along the center it doesn't look smooth now it's because everything has been trued to the shape this is going to take after the pleats are done now on this front piece we are going to need to apply some stay tape or a thin strip of interfacing to this armhole here and this one over here that's going to take away the stretch that this might have and prevent gaping on the back piece you will need to stabilize the shoulders right there with the same thin strip of interfacing what i have here is one of the armholes from the front piece the front piece is the large extended one that i've shown you and i have the front facing underneath the front facing was block fused so I have it on the bottom so it can serve as a guide for the shape I don't want to distort the shape or make it change when I'm fusing on this little bit of interfacing because these pieces eventually will be sewn together so they should have the same shape with my iron I'm just going up and down I'm trying not to move anything so that the two layers of fabric stay unchanged underneath okay so I'm happy that eventually when I sew these two layers together everything's going to be the same length the same shape and now this front armhole is stable and it's not going to stretch out and I'll just do the same with the other armhole this is the type of stitch I'll be using to make the whole tang it's a shallow zigzag 
0.5 width and length is 2.5. It'll almost look like a straight stitch. I'm using a jersey needle number 80. I think that's fine for all the layers I'm gonna be sewing through this ITY. I have my front piece here and this is one of the shoulders. This is where we have this type of shape with that cut out there. I'm gonna form that pleat first. So we're gonna have the fabric right sides together and we have lines here that we are going to match. And all I need to do is join this dot here of this red line I have with the one here on the back. And at the bottom of the pleat, we have another dot that is gonna match the one on the other side. So these are pleats that will be sewn down. They aren't gonna be open pleats that are just gonna be held together at the neckline. So this is the first one I'm going to sew. I'm gonna put a pin so I can see where I'm going to stop sewing because we're sewing all the way through all the way up to the top from this side. When you're sewing with knits, just let the feed dogs do their thing. Don't stretch or pull on the fabric. There we have the first pleat done. Then we have the second one. We have two lines here, one there, one there. I try to bring the camera closer so you can see my lines. This is what I'm gonna to put together now. Always with the fabric right sides together and we form this next pleat. This one is slightly slanted also. I'm just gonna make sure the lines match on the front and on the back. So you can see those are matching right there. I'll do the same with the bottom bit and then I'll work on the middle. So that is the second pleat. That's the first one, that's the second one. And now the third one is a larger pleat and it's quite diagonal. It's wider here and narrower here. So this is what we need to now place together. Make sure when you put your pin through, you're trying to get the pin to come out on the line that's at the bottom. So there we have the third pleat in. This is the largest pleat of them all. I am reinforcing a little bit at the end of each pleat so that they don't come undone. Okay, so this is how the neckline is going to look. We are going to have the shoulder seams there and on one side it's gonna be curved. On the other side, it's gonna go straight down and form this angle. So we're gonna push the volume of the pleats towards this side, towards the neckline that is curved. That's how the pleats have been trued. You can see it takes the shape there, it takes the shape there, it's all perfect. If you end up trying to make a mistake and press the pleat to the other side, these edges are not going to match there. You can see the raw edge is going down there. It'll be a good five eighths away from the edge. That immediately tells you that you're not pushing the volume towards the right side. So look at the roundy bit of the neckline and push the volume of the pleats that way for all of the pleats. I'm going to just hold them down with a pin right there so that they don't move. On this first pleat that we did, we have a little bit of a raw edge there. We can search that to finish it. If you don't want to, it's not gonna tear apart because this is a jersey, it's not going to fray. It's not gonna look as neat either. So I am gonna go ahead and serge this and just finish this area before doing the next step. What I've been doing to finish this lately is just stretching these threads a little bit so I can see. And I'm gonna pull out with my pin the two threads that are on the needles. So the two real threads, not the woolly nylon ones. They're quite easy to just pull out of here. I can tell what the difference is because they are just darker and well, you can tell what regular thread looks like and what the woolly nylon thread looks like. So I've pulled them out there and now I've got the two woolly nylon threads and the two regular threads and I'm just gonna knot it here twice and that's gonna finish the edge of that serged area and not just leave it hanging and just cut it off then it can start unraveling. So that's how I've been finishing this type of thing lately. So I flipped my front piece so that I have the right side of the fabric showing. I've transferred my pins over to this side making sure the volume of the pleat is going that way underneath. And now what we need to do is top stitch this pleat down right on the edge. So from the edge of the neckline up until where the pleat finishes, we're just gonna do a straight stitch right on the edge on these three pleats. I've changed that to my blind hem presser foot with the needle to the left so I can edge stitch really neatly. It's just optional, I find it's really helpful. And then we just repeat the same with these other two pleats. If you're working with a solid, I think it'll be really noticeable. This is a print, so it's not gonna be that much seen, but I still want it to be as neat as it can be. Now what we have to do with this side is get our stay tape or narrow strip of interfacing like I did over here and stabilize this curve right there. I'm gonna take the same approach as I did before and use my facing as a guide. So here we have the facing that has the same shape. I'm going to be laying the facing underneath 
so that I'm sure I'm keeping the right shape and everything when I'm fusing on the interfacing because they need to be identical as they are right here. Okay, here I have my front piece really, really neatly on the ironing board. I have my facing piece right underneath and all I did was fuse the same type of interfacing I'm using here. It's non-stretch, it's the lightest way you can find. A little away from the edge to make sure when I sew at 3 8 it's gonna catch it right there. And that will prevent this neckline from deforming and stretching. And it's gonna have the same shape here and length as the facing that's right underneath. What I have here are two pairs of shoulder seams. These are the main pieces. I've got the back on the front, which is the interface side. This is the one that's not gonna stretch. So I want this one on the top touching my presser foot. And this other side, I want it down on the feed dogs to prevent that one from stretching. That's how I'm gonna sew that. And then I have the shoulder seams of the facings. This doesn't matter which one's on top, they are both interfaced. So I'm just gonna sew all these little four seams at 3 8 seam allowance. Technically you could serge these if you wanted to, I just prefer the sewing machine because then I can press these seam allowances open and have them flat and in the end it'll be less bulky in my opinion. So when I have shoulder seams like this and it's, this area is going to be covered with the facing, I would rather do it with a sewing machine. After sewing the shoulder seams of the facing, I have also finished the edges of the facing here at the bottom, you can see the curved. I've gone through the serger with that. In theory, you could leave it raw and not do anything to it, but I would rather have that neat like that for my peace of mind. Here's the front. This is the shape that we have there. This is where we're going to do the pivot when we're coming down from this curve. And you can see those little marks there on the facing. Those match the pleats that are at the back here exactly where there's a mark there. There is a pleat right on the back. So those match really, really well. And same as this one here. If I put a pin right through the mark, there is my pleat on the back. It's just to help you align everything so everything matches. So this is the first one I made. This is what you would have seen a sneak peek of when I was doing my other video. I really love this print. It's an ITY and it's got a bit of a hound's tooth print going on. Now you can see some distortion in the hound's tooth there where the pleats come together. Maybe you can see the top stitching there. I always knew it was going to be hard to see with this print. But I really wanted to have this tank in this print because I like the grey and the black. I think it's classic and it will just go over anything black. It's so, so neat on the sides, the way the armholes are finished. This asymmetric neckline I think is marvelous. I just think it's so nice. Let me show you how this looks inside. This is how the facing looks on the inside. So this is the front, it will go over the bust, which is my favorite type of facing. And under there you can see the pleats, very neat. On the sides. The facing is tacked down on the side seam just by hand, just a few little stitches there. The under stitching is going to keep that facing inside very neatly there. Always enjoy that and it's right there also on the neckline. The back also has this really nice curve, I think it's really nice. Better than having a facing that goes all the way across, sometimes it just cuts through your upper back and gives you more bulk than you need. So I think this shape is very, very nice. Interfaced under there, it's all surged. Technically, you don't need to finish seams inside with knits. They're not gonna tear apart and unravel, but I just think they look really, really ugly. So you'll never see me do that. I always surge everything and do the best I can. Let's see this one on with a skirt. Some little heels, of course. This is my first Sentosa tank from Itch to Stitch. It's designed for knit fabrics and I made mine in a really floaty ITY. I really like this asymmetric neckline that you'll see up closer and there's another really cool detail on the neckline. It's a pretty relaxed, loose fit. Here you can see the ease at the hips and the waist, just a very wearable, comfortable piece. I like it over denim and I'd also like to make one that is a bit more sporty, like for working out. Here you can see the neckline up closer, how the neckline is asymmetric. I really like that shape shape there and it's really fun to put together finished really cleanly with an all-in-one facing inside so the neckline and the armhole seams are all enclosed with facing really really nice and up closer you're going to see that on the neckline we have some pleats there are three pleats that are asymmetric also and diagonal and they are top stitched down partially on the front that contributes to a little bit of ease there on the front and I think it's really pretty and unique I really liked putting that together and it wasn't hard to sew at all I like the coverage on the armholes and the neckline is not low or high, it's just perfect. Really excited to sew up another one after making the first one.
so I wanted to make a second version I had a really nice red fabric there an athletic knit I only had about a yard I didn't have much more than that I always had the sneaky suspicion that the facings were not going to fit there of course they didn't fit I tried to place my pattern pieces in all sorts of types of layouts and I just could not get the facings to fit only the front facing was going to fit so I decided to do something different and instead of doing the all-in-one facing I just did my own V neck band now it's not a traditional V neckline because it doesn't finish in the center but it's just a sort of offset to the side if you look at it like that it is like a V neckline and you know I've got a video on the channel showing you how you can draft your own V neck band and put it onto whatever you want I'll leave you that video link down below and I've also created a free template for you to download so you can just print out your neck band pieces and then you can measure and determine how to put that on so I did that process with this one. If you are on Patreon and have access to my exclusive content, then you would see how this came together. I showed it there in a nice amount of detail so you can see. And the armholes, I just finished with binding. You've seen me sew this type of binding before. Because I don't have any top stitching on this neckband, I didn't want to have top stitching here either. So the binding is folded to the inside and then stitched in the ditch right there. The binding is serged, so it's nice and neat. I think it looks really clean and it finishes the armholes very neatly. This V right there, this point, meets that pleat right there. I took great care to have that come out as neat as possible. And it's a really nice alternative finish to the all-in-one facing, which I love. I mean, if I would have had more fabric, I would have done the all-in-one facing because I think it's great. <laughs> With this one, you can see the pleats top stitched a little bit more, I think. And this is an athletic knit. I can wear this tank for whatever, I can pair a skirt with it, pants, I can wear it over leggings and work out in it. This one's going to go a really long way in my wardrobe. And red can't go wrong and I didn't have a neat red tank like this, that was nice. That's how it looks inside, that neckband is very neat in there. There you can see the three pleats, diagonal pleats and the other one right there, my binding. And I'm just really happy I was able to sew it. Even though I didn't have enough fabric for the facings, there's always a way. <laughs> That you can finish them in another way this is what I mean about limitless sewing you know don't think you can't do something because you don't have enough fabric sometimes I run into not having enough fabric I run into that problem a lot actually and it's not gonna stop me from making such a beautiful design sure this neckline is a little higher because the band adds a little bit of height there compared to the facing which takes it away and turns out a little lower but my head still fits in there and it's not extremely high <laughs> So let's see this one on. This is my second Sentosa tank from Itch to Stitch. It's a red athletic knit. It's super light. I love how it feels on the skin and I could wear it with linen pants and some heels. I could also wear it for working out and I love garments are gonna work for anything. I made this one about an inch longer than the one you saw previously. A lot of ease at the waist and the hips. Up on the top, you can see this asymmetric neckline. I made a little change and instead of doing the all-in-one facing, I just put a neckband there. I finished my holes with binding they're really clean and you can see the three pleats coming from this asymmetric neckline I think it's really cute with a solid fabric I think you can see this detail more than with the print here you can see the V point up closer with the band right there I have to be honest the all-in-one facing is much easier than doing it like this but I just ran out of fabric and didn't have fabric for the facing so this was a way I could get a red tank because I really wanted a red tank <laughs> and I really love how it turned out it's just as comfortable and I know I'm gonna enjoy wearing it for whatever type of occasion because it's going to serve me for everything really easy top to wear there's nothing really fitted or uncomfortable I wanted to show you my tanks outside but sunset now that it's getting into winter happens around 5 30 p.m i was racing against sunset and i lost so here i am inside filming <laughs> i think the colors get a little bit distorted in here but oh well just believe me that it's red i think it looks a little bit lighter here on the camera but it's just a nice rich red and i love it i hope you give a pattern like this a go i think a tank is great for when it gets hot 
This one doesn't really have a low arm hole. It gives you really amazing cover. The instructions are great. You can always learn new techniques when you sew each to stitch patterns because the way that she tends to finish some of the garments are just really original and different. Finding an all-in-one facing, which tends to be more of a woven technique in this design for me is amazing because it just gives you such a clean finish. So, so clean. It was so much easier than doing the neckband business that I did with my red tank. <laughs> So much easier. Check out the all-in-one facing video if you haven't seen it before. It's a great way to finish sleeveless bodices and tanks and dresses. So neat. Love that this pattern has it. And remember it's 20% off for the first week. I'll leave my affiliate link down below and any other video that could help you put this together. That is all from me today. I will see you again very soon with more sewing on this channel. Bye!